So today we're going to be going over seven cold weather designer fragrances that can't be beat. I mean, simply put, these things hold up to the elements. Whether it's zero degrees outside with a wind chill of negative 10 or negative 15, these fragrances here are still going to be kicking strong and they're going to ensure that you smell at the top of your game. Because the thing with these is these choices are going to be probably not worn as much as some of your typical winter fragrances that the, the general consumers would probably be wearing and focusing on. These here kind of take an enthusiast to uh, get a hold of these and really take advantage of them. At least most of them are. So that's kind of what my focus was to give you some options that you maybe normally wouldn't think about, or maybe you would, but the general public wouldn't, thus setting you apart. I will link all these up down below to discounters so you can save the most amount of money possible. Hitting those links will take you right there. And that's really all we have. Seven fragrances that are going to crush the cold weather. You know, winter's running low. It's running down to the end. Thank God. I'm super happy for that. We just got a foot of snow. And while it's cool for, a, a, you know, a day or two, uh, and winter in general, I guess, is cool for a little bit, but I'm ready for some warm weather again. But you know what? We have no other choice but to bear with it. And start the list off with La Nuit de Lome, Eau de Parfum, Cardamom, Leather, Tonka Bean. A nice, smooth, sweet, and very, very modernized take on La Nuit de Lome. So one of the problems with this one is that people will maybe think that this is La Nuit de Lome EDT, but stronger. And I hate to break it to you, but it's unfortunately not that way. So I guess I should rephrase that. This is actually stronger than La Nuit de Lome Eau de Toilette on my skin, but it doesn't necessarily smell that similar to it. So it's not like a Dolce & Gabbana, the one EDT versus EDP, for example. This one here strays quite a bit away from La Nuit de Lome EDT. You still do get that signature cardamom note in here, which gives it that nice spicy pop in the opening and that oriental feel, kind of that nighttime powdery smell. Uh, but a lot of the tonka bean comes through, giving it just kind of the new modern smell. You pick up on some of the leather here, which gives it a bit of a masculine other undertone. So overall, you just find it to be, you know, taking bits and pieces from La Nuit de Lome, but also really giving it a, a modernized take. I mean, this does not smell like something that would have been released in 2009 when La Nuit de Lome was. This smells like it was released in... 2019 or 20 or whenever it was. That being said, it is a really, really nice fragrance that holds up really well in the cool weather. And also, it's, it's a people pleaser. Let's go to this next one here. Uh, we have a Chanel, so another higher end designer here. Uh, what I like about this one is it's one that you can get on discounter. So it, it kind of automatically gives it uh, an easier way to pick up. Of course, a lot of people, really anyone can just go on their official website and purchase it and you aren't saving a ton of money this way. Uh, but a lot of people do just like to shop discounters. And if you're having a cart thrown together already and you're purchasing some of the other stuff in here, um, you can just throw this one in on top. So I really do like that. But it's Chanel Ego East. So really only Ego East and Platinum Ego East are the two ones that are mainly available on FragranceNet. Uh, Platinum Ego East, great springtime scent, summertime, could be an all year rounder, but this one's really all about the fall and winter time. It's got sandalwood, it's got rosewood, cinnamon, it's smooth, smoky, rich, spicy, mature, very masculine, definitely for the gentleman. So Lanoui de Lome EDP that we just talked about would probably be more for the guy and his you know, late teens into early mid twenties, somewhere around in that age range is where that one would fall uh, just because it has that modernized smell. This one has a bit more of a throwback feel, that woodiness, that spiciness, it's rich, it's masculine. It's gonna be for the guys out there who have a bit more of a refined, mature taste overall. You don't have to be older necessarily to pull this one off. I'm a big fan of this fragrance. I love how it smells. I love how it wears. I love how it makes me feel. Uh, just the original Ego East, it's a great fragrance that is absolutely unstoppable in the wintertime. Seriously, give this one a shot. It's a beast. So this next one, we've got a Paco Rabanne. Now, this is a little bit hard to cover because um, I've heard rumors here and there. Uh, it's one million lucky. Basically, there have been rumors that this is going to be discontinued uh, in order to make room for the newest Elixir, which is now available for pre-order. So that's moving pretty quickly here. Um, and so, you know, who knows, really? I'm not here to tell you whether that is or isn't true because I don't know. 
There have been people that have said that someone that works for uh, the, the house of this one um, or the perfumers confirmed it, something along those lines. Uh, but again, I don't know of that. I'm just kind of bringing this to your attention because when the rumors of one million privé were first coming out, I was in disbelief. I really didn't address it too much. I was just like, oh yeah, right. You know, one million privé, it's a hot fragrance, right? And so it could be easy to think the same about this one. But guess what? One million privé, it's gone, never coming back. So I bring this up so that way you can be at least aware of it. You can make the decision for yourself if you want to either back it up or buy your, your first ever bottle here. Currently, it's not for a terrible price on discounters. I will link it up down below. It's not going to be getting any cheaper, that's for sure. So, uh, you know, you can use that information and make your own decisions. As of right now, still fully available most places though, so I wouldn't worry too much. I just wanted to make you aware. So this one has plum, honey, hazelnut. Uh, there's a good amount of notes in here. I just kind of wanted to feature those. So this is a fragrance that I, it took some time for me. It really did. Aldehydes in here as well. I'm picking that up. Uh, and the reason why is just because... You know, when things get hyped to the extremes, a lot of times it does make me skeptical. And when this one came out and was getting hyped, my channel was much smaller at the time. I didn't really have the money to be throwing around at new releases all the time. And so I just kind of shied away from it. And it took me a good while to finally pick this one up and start testing it. And it's a fragrance that each time I smell it, I come around to it. You know, just before I was recording this video, for example, I just sprayed it up in the air and I, you know, I smelled it. But then as I was standing kind of away from it, I caught a whiff of it in the air again. And I'm like, you know what? That is a really, really fun and sexy smelling fragrance. That's literally what I thought. I'm like, this is something that a young, fun guy should wear and enjoy. And there are a lot of fragrances out there like that, at least a good amount. But, you know, there was something about this one when I smelled it where I'm like, yeah, I get the uh, hype behind this one. I understand it. You know, you can spray it on your skin and bury it into your nose all day but you really need to experience this one wisping through the air to get the full effect. It's woody, it's sweet, it's creamy, it has this kind of hazelnut smell. Uh, it's kind of gourmand in a way, but it also has this light wispiness from the aldehydes. Quite unique. I have to give it to them. They did a great job here. I would say overall, probably this and Privé were a couple of their best flankers, and if they really end up discontinuing this, I don't know what they're doing. I guess we better hope that uh, One Million Elixir is going to be banging pretty good then. So this next one here, we have Stronger With You Intensely by Emporio Armani. So this one has toffee, vanilla, tonka bean. Uh, what I like about this one is it's available. Simply put, would I put Absolute in here? Absolutely I would. The problem is, every discounter I've checked, every website that I've checked in the U.S. can't find it. Fragrance Net, Fragrance X, Fragrance Buy. With all the discounters there, eBay, it's hard. Retailers, I can't find it. I don't know what is going on with that fragrance. So I don't include it, right? If you can't buy it, I'm not including it. But you can buy intensely at discounters, most of them. I will link it up down below. So, you know, I'll throw this one in instead. And to be fair, it's not like it's a huge deal. This is still a great fragrance. While I prefer absolutely, this would be my second favorite. So it's kind of gourmand, sweet, smooth, creamy, that nice vanilla note in here. It comes across great. The toffee note is what's giving it that kind of gourmand, uh, almost hazelnut type of smell also, and a bit of a coffee smell to it as well. It has a texturized kind of a delivery to it, working with the vanilla here. Uh, it's a fragrance that's very sweet. So, you know, for reference, completely opposite to Ego East by Chanel, right? Mature guy, young guy. You can be young and mature, but different age groups here. Of course, either could go either way. But, you know, a lot of people that I, I speak to uh, that would like Ego East would probably shy away from Stronger With You intensely. So for my younger guys out there, you want something fun and playful that really can just not be stopped in the wintertime, strong performer, great compliments, smells great, versatile, Stronger With You intensely. I say we go here, Royal Night by Dolce & Gabbana. Oh man, this is a good one right here. Really, really good. I kind of talked about the one lineup in the beginning when I was talking about the EDT versus EDP. And so you know, the problem is, if I were to put the EDP, it's actually, it's not, it can be stopped. It's not unstoppable. It, it can be beat by the cold weather. I've had it happen before. Not the best performer. No news there, right? Uh, that's just how it is. So for me, the one EDP, and EDT for that matter, 
is retired solely to date fragrance usage and also just evening like for example tonight it's friday night i'm probably going to spray that one on before bed just because it's comforting to me i adore how dolce and gabbana the one smells edp edt whatever that's my usage for it if i'm going out during the day in winter time I'm not gravitating towards it but i would gravitate towards a royal night because this takes that dna removes the tobacco which does suck but it bumps up the performance a lot. So if you are a performance juggernaut and you need that and you could sacrifice the tobacco note for good performance, check this one out. And one thing I always say too, if you are bothered by the lack of tobacco, which is a bummer, layer them, okay? Give yourself a, a good couple sprays of Royal Night and then pop in a couple sprays of the EDT over top, get you that tobacco, but then you have the rich base of Royal Night lasting throughout the daytime. That is the key to success and really the only way you can get good performance from Dolce & Gabbana The One. Highly recommend you do it. Royal Knight here has more emphasis on the sandalwood. It's a bit more creamy, smooth, and sweet and very delicious, incredibly sexy, fantastic winter scent. Up next, another personal favorite of mine, Paco Rabanne Pure Excess Night. This one has myrrh, caramel, ginseng. Very spicy up top, dries down to a warm, smooth, creamy center. Love everything about this fragrance. Love it. And I've talked about this before, but you know, when I first got this one in, I sprayed it on my skin, tried it out. The ginseng note was so overpowering that it caught me off guard. Like it made my eyes water, made my nose tingle. I'm almost having that happen right now even though it's not hitting me that hard because I remember how spicy this one opens up and when I first smelled it I wasn't expecting it now I know what to expect if I were to spray this on my skin here and smell it uh, I'm used to it now but in the beginning I was taken off guard so one thing I want to get across to you guys is if you are testing this one for the first time let it dry down because that opening will put some people off if you're not into very spicy fragrances. Because again, it's ginseng and ginger also, so it's right there. But the dry down of this one, when you get past that, maybe speed bump to some, is worth it 10 times over. So smooth, so creamy, caramely. And I mean, this is a true work of art from Paco Rabanne of all brands, right? I made a couple of fragrances in this video. Pure Excess Night, seriously amazing, big, big time performer, strong stuff, and also, surprisingly, it's a good compliment getter. Check it out. And last up for this video, my cute little bottle of The Most Wanted by Azaro, the newest one. We've gone through the phases with this line. You know, it's done the, the typical uh, fragrance flanker lifespan. Start with the original, you have a fresh tonic version, you have an EDP, and then of course, finally, the Parfum, which I believe is just an EDP Intense. Yeah, I would have Parfum Intense, but they kind of market it as a Parfum a little bit, at least in my opinion, but whatever. It smells great though. It's got Tonka Bean, Cardamom, Amberwood. It's a three note breakdown scent. That's really all they give you. It's really all you need to know about or care about, honestly. It's uh, kind of like a hybrid between Zara Wanted by Night with that sweetness but it lacks some of the super strong spiciness and also fruitiness. It's, I don't know, kind of a different different take on that DNA, uh, given that it has, and I did catch it, given that it has more of a creaminess, so to speak. It's almost like, you know, this right here, if I can find it, in a way where it smells even more modern, basically. You know, it smells like something that is released now because it has that kind of amber wood pop to it, that kind of fresh creaminess um, that's going on here. In a way, it's a little bit predictable, but I still have to give it to them. When you wear it, you pick up on the other notes, the, the cardamom and all of that stuff. So, you know, it, it's nice for me. I would still pick Wanted by Night, but at the same time, uh, this one here has little bit more of a richness, more sweetness, less fruitiness, making it also stand up very, very well in the winter time. And to be fair, not everyone likes Wanted by Night. The fruitiness and the kind of Invictus-y bubble gumminess that's underlying still isn't really you know something that a lot of people like. So this is a little bit of a different take. I still think it's solid. 
All right, you guys, that's gonna do it for me. That is seven cold weather fragrances that cannot be beat. These are strong right here. They get the job done, they work great. Highly recommend all of these here for a bunch of different uses, for a bunch of different tastes out there, no matter what you're into. I will link them up down below. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you tomorrow with another one. Take care.